Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Huffman of Tech. I'm your host Ben, of course, and I've been using Marquis Pixel 11.0.1 RC for over three days now. And as promised, this is my follow up video. So just to make sure we are on the same page, if we go to the about this Mac section to see the version we have here, you can see that it's Mac OS Pixel 11.0.1 and the build number that we have here is 20 b 5022a now let's begin by looking at some new features and changes that are managed to find after three days of use and just keep in mind that this is going to be in addition to what i found in my initial video that i did so if you want to see my initial video you can click on it it will be somewhere up here and also i'm going to leave it in the description of this video the first new change that i noticed here is that mac os pixel finally has a full installation if you run the command to check if the final installation is available you'll be able to see that macOS pixel 11.0.1 this build has a full installation and just to show you that this is the version that we have here you can see you know the build number that we have here 20B5022A and then 20B522A and it has a full installation. What this means is that you can download it from Apple servers directly and put it into a DMG file. Also, something else that I noticed with this update, Microsoft Word is finally working. And the way that I got it to work, I actually had to delete it and then reinstall it. So I did that. And after doing that, Microsoft Word is working. I just opened it. Let's give it some time to see if it opens up. And boom, there you see it's working. And you can open it. And when it comes to closing it, I was having issues before. But as you can see here, you can easily minimize and close Microsoft Word. Also, when it comes to Safari, let's just open Safari so that I show you some of the changes that we have here. You can see that the recently visited tabs from all your devices that are linked or synchronized into the same iCloud you have more tabs that are saved here so I have an iPhone here that I use to browse the net so much and you can sort of see that the browsing history that we have here is more than what was there on beta 1 before so this is something that I noticed and if you click here where it says show less you can see that you know it's actually more than what was there before. So this section has been improved and it's something new that I also noticed with this update. Again, also while still in Safari, if we go to YouTube, you can see that for me, I have 4K video on YouTube. Now, before I updated, I didn't have this. And after I updated, this is a feature that I didn't see immediately. So in order for me to see 4K video in Safari, Let's look for a video that is in 4K, for example, MKBHD. And then if we click on his video, it will begin to play automatically. And then if we go to settings here, you can see that the quality, we can change it and we can select 4K. If you're not seeing this and you are on the same version that I'm on, whilst Safari is open, go to develop and then go to where it says experimental features and then scroll all the way down until you see VP9 decoder. If it's checked, it means that VP9 decoder is on. And if it's unchecked, it means that VP9 decoder is on. So if it's on for you, turn it off by unchecking VP9 decoder, just like that. And then close Safari and then make sure you force quit Safari just in case it's still running in the background. So force quit it just like this, as you can see. And then after doing this, you know, close this tab here and then open Safari again and wait for the YouTube video to load up. And as you can see here, the same video no longer has 4K video. We can only select to a maximum of 1080p. So what you want to do here is go to develop and then go to experimental features and then look for VP9 decoder. As you can see, it's unchecked. Now click it so that it puts the check mark. If you click it, this happens. And then what you want to do now is to close Safari again and then go to uh, force quit Safari just like this. And then once you force quit Safari, close this tab here. Let's close it and then go back to Safari. And then when we open YouTube in Safari, 
let's just give it a moment to load as you can see here the same video is loading up and this time around you can already see that 4k is available now if we select quality you can see that we can select 4k for this video that's how i managed to fix mine and at this time i'm getting a lot of requests when it comes to this uh, issue so hopefully this helps you out and as you can see for me it's working i have 4k video on safari and any website that has 4k video will be able to work also with this update i noticed that third party applications are working as they are supposed to and for example if we open photoshop here just to show you as an illustration i noticed that look at the speed that it opens with and also it's more stable than before and most third party apps are actually more stable than before besides parallel desktop if you have an older version you need to upgrade to the latest version in order for that specific software to work okay also i noticed that screen recordings are working as they are supposed to for me i have my screen recordings saved automatically to the desktop and as you can see this is one example of such screen recording and before there was an issue whereby screen recordings wouldn't save and as you can see here they are automatically saving to the designated folder or location when it comes to some issues or bugs that some users are experiencing with this update the first one has to do with air ports auto switching and noise cancellation when it comes to the mac that is an issue that quite a number of people are getting to me and then talking about and also when it comes to bluetooth there's an issue whereby you might be unable to connect certain displays so just keep this in mind when it comes to spotlight search there's a little known issue sometimes as you can see my spotlight search just popped up you can see that i can pull it up again and i can search for anything so as you can see here applications i'm able to find and some documents i'm able to find but for some users when they pull up spotlight search just like this it's crashing and sometimes when they search for something it's not popping up so those are some additional new features and also known issues that i've managed to find and most users got to me with hopefully if you are experiencing some of these issues you'll be able to see that you are not alone when it comes to this update now let's look at the youtube community pool because this time around i got so many votes and thank you very much for taking part so if you go to my youtube page here and then go to the community tab you can see that basically three days ago i said how has mac os pixel 11.0.1 rc been for you this is the number of votes that we have 454 if we refresh the page this number might actually go up so let's just refresh the page to make sure that we are current so yeah 454 and you can see that 26 percent of the votes said that this update is great which is good and then you can see that 12 percent said okay but a few issues here and there and then four percent said it's terrible and then this is interesting 53 percent said i'm on catalina or an older version of mac os which is interesting it makes more sense because at this time we are almost there big sir is just you know it's about to knock on our doors so it makes sense why 53 percent said i'm on catalina or order and then six percent said they use windows now let's look at how battery performance has been for me on my macbook so if you go to the battery section here let's just go to uh, settings actually and then just go to see how much my battery is and if we go to the battery tab there you can see that in the last 10 days this is when i had like the was testing the battery the whole day and you can see that i used almost 100 percent and the number of hours that i got on this day as i was doing my testing you can see that i got over 11 hours let's just say 11 hours to be safe which is good at this time i actually would be doing like basic tasks like using word and then just browsing the internet twitter and social media handles that's what i'll be doing and as you can see this is my energy usage and you can see the corresponding percentage and you can see the screen on time that works with that just in case you are curious to see what's my cycle count and also my status of my battery you can see that my battery maximum health is now on 
85%. So when I updated initially, it was on 86%. And as you can see here, it has dropped by 1% and it's on 85%. And these are the number of cycle counts that I have. So the reason why my battery cycle count has dropped i think it's because i'm using it more and more on battery and also this could perhaps be a bug but i highly doubt that if it is a bug then it's something that we'll be able to see when the next update comes out but i highly doubt that that is likely now when it comes to performance i did run geekbench scores applications are opening as they're supposed to so let's jump straight to the geekbench scores when i carry out these geekbench scores i have nothing else running in the background of the mac besides finder and Geekbench 5 itself, just to make sure that nothing slows down the process or just to make sure that I have even results throughout my test. So I did do Geekbench 5 tests with this update. And as you can see here on MacWay's Pixel 11.0.1 RC, I got a score of 741 for single core. And this has actually dropped before compared to what I had before I had a score of 875 so quite substantial drop and then when it comes to multi-core on macOS pixel 11.0.1 i had the score of 3078 and before that i had a score of 3502 so when it comes to cpu both single core and multi-core performance you can see that it has sort of dropped beyond the usual and if you compare both single core and multi-core to other devices that aren't on the beta version then you'll be able to see that this is actually performing lower than expected so it feels more stable but when it comes to these scores you can see that it's a bit lower compared to this i'm curious to see what will happen when pixel officially comes out whether this will continue to be like this or it will be improved now when it comes to 3d image rendering or graphics performance also known as gpu i did run geekbench 5 scores and i'm happy to say that with mac os pixel 11.0.1 the rc version that i'm on i had a score of 17973 and before on 11.0.1 beta 1 i had a score of 17,613. So when it comes to GPU performance, it's slightly higher than beta one. But again, this is a difference that you won't be able to notice unless you test for it. Now, the big question is, should you be updating to macOS Pixel 11.0.1 RC, the version that I'm on here, if you haven't yet done so? No, you shouldn't be updating. This is not an update that you'd wanna jump on at this time that we are right now. Apple is most probably holding on to macOS Pixel 11.0 until the Apple Silicon event takes place, just like what they did with iOS 14.1. So they do this in order to avoid leaking information for the newer Apple Silicon devices that are going to come with this update. And then macOS Pixel 11.0.1 will be available as a follow-up update and also as a bug fix update this means that if you are on 11.0.1 you'd have to downgrade in order to update to macOS pixel 11.0 when it comes out but if you are already on macOS pixel 11.0.1 beta 1 then updating to this rc version won't hurt much as you can see it's improved in terms of stability the only downside that i noticed is that single core and multi-core cpu scores are slightly lower than expected other than that that's about it for me guys if you like this video drop a like and hit subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching stay safe and i will definitely see you in the next video very soon peace